When I was a kid at Lincoln County Historical Society, when I volunteered there, there was a photograph on the wall for years and years in this old frame. The photograph was from the mid-1880s, and in the photograph, there's people mulling around in this horrible, ugly, muddy road with these wood walkways next to these buildings. And on one of the walkways, going across this muddy flat, was this lone dog just standing there in the photograph. And I, I would stand and stare at that dog, wondering whose dog was that? I started researching some of the people that lived during that time who owned the shop that the dog was standing in front of and who owned the shop next door to it. Once I did that, the trail just didn't stop. And ever since then, it's just that dogs never left. Cameras have a very short life in wet plate. That's why they're rare, all the originals. So it made more sense to make my own equipment, make my own cameras. As I did that, I started getting better and better about understanding how the cameras work, how to work them to get the image I want out of them, and what kind of abuse they can really take. Some of the older cameras that I've seen of originals, they're built the same way, they're built like tanks. Most of these cameras went through hell out in the outdoors. And so my cameras are built much the same way. They're, they're built as solid and as simple as possible. Wearing the clothing from the time period while you're shooting wet plate, it, you know it's not a requirement, but when you go to play baseball, you, you want to put on a jersey. When this first came out as a process, a lot of photographers were treated more like witches, especially in some small rural communities, because uh, it's, it's very much like alchemy to anybody that doesn't understand chemistry, to watch an image literally appear right in front of you as you pour this chemical on it. It was, it was magic back then, especially in the 1860s. I think, you know, the thing that appeals to me most about tintypes is the fact that there's only one. You know, that when you look at a tintype, an antique store or a flea market or a swap meet, the tintype you're looking at is the only one of that image. They're, you cannot make a copy of a tintype. They're, they're not a negative. They're a one-shot deal. You know, when you look at a tintype of a, a Confederate soldier or a Union soldier, you know that that particular tintype you're holding was in the room with the soldier. That's the plate the photographer took out of his camera. In that sense, you share that experience with him and you can't do that with other forms of photography. Wet plate is a historic process, something that requires more thought, more, in my opinion anyway, more feeling. You can't just point your camera at something and shoot. And I think as an artist, it helps me make better pictures because I, Instead of just raising a camera to my eye, I have to really think about what I'm pointing the camera at. For a long time, wet plate was considered a lost art. There were maybe a handful of people doing it. And now there's thousands of wet platers around the world. 